Today on Country Squire Radio, it's a... Here's what we're looking at now. As you can see, I've been getting some stuff done. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Food Theory. From the premier source of Pipe and Tobacco News, it's Briar Report. Hey everybody, Dave the Pipe Pirate here, and we are just about ready to start our show. I'm going to bring Greg on in a minute, but I just wanted to say, hey, welcome to the Syndicated Pipe Club, and we will get to it. So just bear with me a minute here while I bring everything over. How are you doing tonight, Greg? I'd be, I'd be doing better if I'd actually turned your sound on. Let's try that again. How are you doing tonight, Greg? Uh pretty hot over here at the moment but i think you're in the same situation i am we were in the high 90s today and i was taking down bunk beds in a room with no air conditioner yeah that would uh that would not be fun it wasn't not fun at all okay looks like i gotta turn myself up a little bit it's been a while guys so just uh just bear with us here while we iron out a few of the the kinks and stuff and we'll get her going it's a work in progress. Yeah, so hope you guys like everything that you're seeing right now. There's the, my name below me, Greg's name below him, which is actually not where I'm pointing in the thing. It's the other way. Well, you, you get it. It, it. It's, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It's over there. There we go. <laughs> it's one of those things, guys. Like, I can see everything over here. That's why I glance at it every once in a while to make sure the levels are good. But other than that, you know, when I'm talking, you know, right at the camera. I can't see anything but us. And I don't see anything, so I'm just taking it all by faith that uh, everything is kind of going on <laughs> right now. And uh, I, Dave could just be uh, pranking me right now and uh, uh, making me think that there's all oh, this stuff going on. That's why that wasn't on. working before. Shoot. We just went all goofball-y. Uh, hold on a second here, guys. Yeah, now you can just see me. I wondered what was up. I forgot to put this, uh, put us to full screen in Zoom, and then it threw threw everything off in the in the thing. Ah! Uh, oh my gosh! Just getting everybody back to kosher here. It's also tough because Greg's when he's coming through is shrunk a little bit more than mine is. He's like, uh, you're getting a four by four by three instead of a sixteen by nine. Hmm. Probably because your camera on your phone. Probably. And uh, makes it a little bit more difficult to position everybody. I mean, there is only two of us, but still. There we go. I think everything's all right. Thank goodness I have two cameras, so you guys can all see this. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Back to normal. All right. Yep. Yeah. Love these works in progress. I don't know how much of this everybody's going to see, but you'll get some of it, I'm sure. For sure. All right. So, Syndicated Pipe Club. So, guys, if you haven't figured out what we're doing here on YouTube and on our old podcast, Out of the Speed Force, now Syndicated Pipe Club. Which I believe uh, all of our Flash stuff is now officially Season 0 or Season 1. One of the two. It's still there, nonetheless. You can go back and listen mm -hmm. to it if you, if you wish. But... Uh, we are just moving along and upgrading a little bit so that, uh, oh, that's better. So that, uh, you know, there's still stuff going and coming out and it all hits all of our interests. It's pipes, it's tobacco, it's TV. I, I mean, what more could you want? I guess video games, but, uh, we gotta, think, we gotta uh, call we it somewhere. Have... Right, right. 
I mean, for crying out loud, if we did video games too, like I'd never sleep. Mm-hmm. So, what are you smoking tonight, Greg? Uh, I am smoking uh, Cornell and Deal's uh, Repose, uh, which is a uh, cube cut uh, burly blend. It's uh, one that I hadn't heard anybody really talk about, but uh, I was just kind of looking to do an order a couple months ago and saw the tin, and I, I was kind of interested in trying like a a cube cut burley mm-hmm. and i was uh, you know it had um burley a little bit of perique uh turkish and uh also a couple drops of rum in there and i like a lot of navy blends so i thought that uh, all that stuff sounded up my alley and uh tried it in and uh just recently did the salt lift uh, virtual pipe club deal and uh, right. added two more tins of it because uh, i was just wrapping up uh, my last uh, the only tin i had of it but i really like it it's a just a nice blend um you know it's sweet not too sweet and you also get that nice burly flavor which i've really been on a, a burly kick for a while now so uh it's a blend that i hope to add to my usual rotation good stuff How about you? What are you smoking over there? I managed to get myself my hands on some Esoterica. Got some Dorchester. Um, At the our our local pipe club had their first meet over the weekend, and uh, one of the guys there, the the guy who started the club, the club president Ed, he uh, he's not a big Latakia guy, so he had a bunch of stuff that he wanted to get rid of, and. uh, one of the things he uh, he gave to me was enough esoterica Dorchester to probably fill my my pipe here two or three times. So I'll get a good uh, good chance to figure out how this how this goes. But as of right now, I've only had like about four or five puffs on off of it, so I don't mm. have much of an opinion. I'm, I'm trying I'm, to think. Oh, I'm not opposed I, I think, to it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what um. What's all in it, if you know on the top of your head? On my laptop, I brought up smokingpipes.com, so I can I can read their description to you. Okay, Esoterica Dorchester is a special formulation of six Virginias, plus golden and dark Virginias, with, air, uh, with an air-cured leaf, a pinch of Louisiana Perique, um, an easy-burning... I don't have my glasses on... Um, Easy burning is ensured by the carefully select cut. The perique balances the Virginias. Oh, so this is actually a, a is a, a vapor. Hmm. I, I thought it, since he gave it to me, it was uh, going to be in English, but I'm okay with that. Yeah, sounds good. So far, you know, I understand at least in part with this tobacco with trying this tobacco that I understand I kind of understand a little bit why the the demand is there for the esoterica blends they're good at least the ones I've tried so far which just makes about three that I've tried and I get it they're good but they're not great in my opinion so their marketing strategy of making small batches and uh releasing them out out of the way they do that's excellent it's a good way yeah. to, good way to keep your tobacco in demand yes but uh not good for people that uh don't want to put up with uh the drama of uh keeping an eye on their email inboxes or social media yeah for the yeah. reports of it's in it's in get it get it before it's gone yeah Yeah, my policy on Esoterica blends is basically if I'm at a place and they actually have it, and it's not an exorbitant amount, I might pick it up. But uh, other than that, I'm really not uh, going out of my way to like hunt for it or anything because I think it's just going to lead to more frustration than uh, uh, than anything. 
which is a shame because there's a couple uh, blends on there that I, I would actually like to try, like uh, and so to bed. Um, someone actually, uh, a uh, friend of mine actually sent me a bowl's worth of uh, Stonehaven once, and I actually had that to celebrate uh, doing the last of my uh, graduate work. Nice, nice. I thought it was an appropriate uh, time to break that out. But, yeah. uh, you know, it, it, it's good stuff, but uh, I don't know if I would ever yeah, tear my hair out trying to get more of it. <laughs> yeah, no, I I agree. I don't, I don't think it's worth the... The Black Friday mentality on it. If I can get some, like you said, if I happen to go to a store and there's some there, I'll probably buy it, no matter what the price is on the tin, just because it's uh, it's not something you can easily get a hold of, especially if it's the blend Tilbury, and that's simply because I want a tin that says Tilbury on it, because there's mm-hmm. a town uh, 20 minutes to my west that is named Tilbury. That's the only reason I want the tin. I, I'd even take an empty tin if someone's got it and wants to send it to me. Right. Yeah. Could you imagine if there was like, a, like an actual in-store, like, a, like Black Friday kind of like pipe tobacco thing? Like, how many like, if there would be any pipe smokers out there that would actually kind of go into the whole, uh, like, Black Friday madness of like pushing pushing each <laughs> other over to to get a an eight ounce uh, bag of. Uh, Stonehaven and uh, all those blends. I don't think there is enough of us that uh, want it that badly that would do it. Right. Plus, I have a hard time seeing all the pipe smokers I've met, either online or in person. None of them seem to be the type that want that kind of a confrontation. Right. Right. So what are you? What pipe are you smoking tonight? That looks to be a Canadian, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, this is a um, oh, GBD uh, Canadian. I picked this up off of uh, eBay uh, earlier this year, or like around May, uh, uh, April, I think, actually. Nice. Uh, got a got a really nice price off of it uh, for it, and uh, I'm I'm very happy with it. It's quickly become one of my favorites. Uh, I love. Uh, Canadian shapes, uh, Canadian uh, lum- uh, lumbermen, um, Liverpool, all and uh, uh, love it. So you know, I, I've been looking for to add more of those to my collection, and this is uh, one of my favorites. Yeah, that's definitely a shape I need to get. Being in Canada, I should have at least one Canadian pipe. I have none. I have all kinds of them. But I don't have a Canadian. That's just sad. It's the perfect pun. Right. You know, and any uh, there was one time I uh, somebody asked on Twitter uh, what what kind of uh, shape is your favorite, and it was uh, and I put for mine like uh, Canadians. Uh, uh, I, I love Canadians, and uh, one of my Canadian followers was like, uh, "Thank you, we appreciate it." <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I'm just smoking my Missouri Meerschaum uh, Cobbett. Uh, I think this is the Shire, if I remember mm-hmm. right. One that I got specifically on the re- 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 recommendation of uh, the uh, guys at the Country Squire, uh, John David Cole. He said on uh, the Country uh, Country Squire radio once that. He thought this was a, about around the same proportions as the Bing's favorite. And soon, okay, that's a cheap alternative to that. Then I'll buy one. And then, of course, you know, with Cobb Foolery this past year, I I made my own. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Bing's favorite is definitely on my list of uh, briars to pick up one day. Oh, mine too.
But uh, yeah, so for those of you who are watching uh, watching on YouTube and not listening to the podcast, because the podcast is going to have a slightly different thing happen at the beginning. Um, for this episode, you probably saw the mishmash of channels flipping around, and the one that started off uh, was from uh, Country Squire Radio. And I just wanted to let everybody know, all the permissions aren't in to use all those clips yet. So... Some changing might go on down the road, but I do have permission from Country Squire to use that clip, and everybody that I pulled from the YTPC so far has uh, given uh, us permission to use their clips that I've asked for, so there aren't going to be many changes, just the few, and if I don't hear back, well, I'm just going to take the, the silence as a yes, and that it's okay. <laughs> yes, yeah, better to ask uh, uh, forgiveness than permission, I guess. Hey, I asked ahead of time, so, and I already, mm -hmm. I had already made the mashup, so we'll, we, I'm going to, I've got two, this one, and then uh, the one that we used this week, and the next episode will have a different one, and I'm going to alternate back and forth. Awesome. Maybe when, once everything's all done and uh, all done with the, putting the, the crib and all that stuff together, I, maybe I'll make another one tomorrow, so we might yeah. have three or four by the time, uh, by the time the next episode is recorded anyway. Nice. You did a nice job with that. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, so we should probably get to the second half of the premise behind the show, which is the TV. And since TV is such a loose term now, because mm -hmm. you can watch anything on your TV, you can watch your standard broadcast, you can watch your cable, you can even watch the internet on your TV. I do it all the time. Disney+, Plus, Netflix... YouTube even I watch it on the TV just on the other just across the room from me but uh, so the uh, the idea here behind the syndicated pipe club is syndicated because back in the day programs got syndicated the the reruns that you see of the Big Bang Theory they're in syndication things like that Star Trek's um, even something newer like uh, the Clone Wars uh, if it was still being rerun on uh, Disney Channel or anything like that that's that's syndicate that's syndication for anybody yes. who didn't know and for anybody who's watching this and has no idea what a TV actually is other than a thing to use the internet with. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I, and I grew up watching a lot of reruns. Like, uh, growing up, I watched a lot of Nickelodeon and then Nickelodeon would transition into Nick at Night. Mm -hmm. And, uh, through Nick at Night, I watched a lot of classic television from, uh, you know, decades past, everything from like Mr. Ed uh, the monsters, the monkeys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I dream of genie. Uh, once it got past the seventies into the eighties, and uh, did more stuff. Yeah, the Andy Griffith both, show, things like that. Yeah, and moved to stuff like Roseanne and all that stuff. Stuff that I could remember being on TV at the time. That's when I, I kind of checked out because I I was more I'm more interested in, in like the classic television shows. Uh, from like the 50s through the 70s. Uh, I, I just find that more interesting to me uh, if I'm going to watch reruns. Not that that's the only thing I watch, but uh, you know, when I want my classic television, that's what I go for. Yeah, and uh, we're starting out with something short. Something short. A nice, easy series, because Greg and I are both expecting, so we, we need to get as many episodes uh, ahead as we can. Greg's yes. closer than I am, um, September, mm -hmm. and my wife and I are expecting our fourth at the the end of October, so we decided we'd start out with something nice and short, easy, it's on. And, uh, and new. And new, yeah, brand new, last year. Uh, season two is set to come out right around the time my daughter is supposed to be born. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're actually speaking about The Mandalorian. Now, I know that's been covered. Over on various channels, um, Star Wars TV Talk in the podcast world has done an excellent job of synopsizing the episodes and whatnot. So if you want some uh, some good listening, absolutely. After you're done listening to us or watching us, go find them. I will try to remember to put a link to their website uh, down below. But yeah, The Mandalorian, Star Wars, something something classic, something with a modern take. It takes place 
after the fall of the Empire. So kind of canon canonizing the, the sequels that we've had recently. And uh, yeah, so Greg, I know that you are just fresh off watching this. I'm just a few hours ahead of you on that. So what do you think so far? Yeah. Episode one. Well, it's interesting, you know, like, um, you know, like I, I didn't have Disney Plus before uh, we decided until today, actually, <laughs> to, to watch the episode to uh, you know, talk about the podcast just because uh, like I I don't hate Disney, but there's a lot of stuff with Disney that I'm just not uh, super fond of. Um, I don't like the fact that they own so much entertainment. Mm. Uh, it would be like it. It'd be one thing if it was their properties, but uh, just uh, I, like I think the Fox merger uh, a year or two ago kind of was the straw that broke the camel's back for me. And uh, between that, uh, the cancel their canceling of uh, the Mouse Guard movie, uh, which Fox had been in development before they were purchased, and, and other things like it, Disney's kind of had like a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth, you know. Like, I like the Marvel stuff um, a lot, but uh, overall, like, I just, I don't care for, like, all the remakes that they're doing and everything. Uh, so I actually had put off picking up Disney Plus and, and really didn't think I would get it until, like, our our son uh, was old enough to start watching stuff on TV. But, uh, you know, I... With everything going on with the Mandalorian, I thought that it was uh, a good enough point for me to kind of, you know, give it a shot. Because, you know, I guess maybe we want, if we want to, we could talk a little bit about our uh, Star Wars background. Um, for you, you know, for me, I was a big fan of the original trilogy. As a, you know, a young teenager, I picked up the Star Wars VHS, uh, mm -hmm. classic VHS ser uh, tapes and watched them a whole bunch. You know, I had the action figures, uh, even like the little like micro machine action figure type of stuff. Um, anything Star Wars I loved. Um, and then the prequels came out and, you know, I liked it at first, but then it, it just wasn't... I, I kind of got a little disenfranchised with it to the point where, you know, I still actually haven't seen uh, Revenge of the Sith and uh, the sequel films. So, you know, I still love the original trilogy and, and I do plan on going back and watch, giving the prequels another chance. Uh, but I felt that, uh, you know, I'd heard so much positive buzz about the Mandalorian and how a lot of people felt like they, um, the people behind it that made it really understood stuff like the original trilogy and what made Star Wars, Star Wars. And I, uh, you know, gave it a shot. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's fair. I also, uh, discovered Star Wars in high school. Some of my friends at the time were, uh, doing a marathon and I went and watched we watched all three in a weekend we stretched it of course because we were doing other things other than watching Star Wars but that was the that was the main thing we did get all three movies in in a weekend and uh, it was it was fun so the, I loved it the original trilogy was great um, I watched all three of the prequels as they came out in the theater as you do and uh, I was, you know, I agree with everybody with the issues that they have on the Jar Jar Binks character. Those of us who have seen the prequels. And, uh, yeah, it's he's not a great character. I, I get what they were trying to do. It, they just failed miserably at it. That's what happened there. But, uh, you know what? Putting that aside, I still thought the uh, the movies were good. And uh, good enough to be called Star Wars. And as things have all come out in the recent past, I've seen all the sequels in the theater. Except for 
the Han Solo movie. I have still yet to see that. And I probably won't see it because I just don't want to. Not that I have any problems with the fact that they made the story. It's just not something I've ever wanted to wanted to know. I think what you need to know about Han, you can learn in the original movies, and then yeah, he wor- he works a bit better as a uh, you know not knowing more about his past. I think I think you could have done a Han Solo movie, but in- I don't think. I would have had him established already as kind of like a, a smuggler mm-hmm. rather than showing how he met Chewie. Maybe show like a, a scrape that they had, uh, you know, a, a couple of scrapes that they've had, that they had before meeting up with uh, uh, Luke and uh, Obi-Wan. Yeah. I think that that might have been a better way to approach it rather than telling an origin story. I don't think we needed an origin story. No, Han Han definitely works better as a mysterious character. And since I don't know what's in that movie, per se, I've heard a few things, but the character's still the same as it was for me. So I think it's a good choice. If that's the way you want the character, don't watch Solo, a a Star Wars story. Keep the mystery. Rogue One, however, I loved it. It was a great great place to fit it in to show how the the, uh, Rebellion got a hold of the Death Star plans. They... That was a great way to go. We're probably I'm probably going to get shaded for that, but I don't care. It was a good, uh, like what it was you a good like. movie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, you know, that's the thing. Like, you know, I have my opinions about, uh, you know, the, the Star Wars series, but, you know, it doesn't bother me if people enjoy it. I have a lot of friends that, you know, they love all the, the sequel stuff. And, you know, that's okay. Like, it's not necessarily my cup of tea, but, you know, we all have different opinions of it. I, I want to see Disney do better with it, uh, with the Star Wars series. And I think actually the, the Mandalorian is that a really good step in the right direction. Not to spoil my, my feelings on the first episode, but uh, you know, just generally with how the Mandalorian was received, I think, you know, it's been the best received part of uh, the Disney Star Wars universe so far. I'd have to agree. Based on my own opinions, having seen it already all the way through and well, just starting this rewatch with you and uh, what I've seen written on the internet, most people are fully behind The Mandalorian as a show. But that leads me to this question. What did you actually think of the first episode of The Mandalorian. It left me wanting. I was very highly disappointed. No, I, I, I loved it. Uh, like, you know, I really enjoyed it. Like, um, I thought it was a lot of fun. You know, this is obviously, a, you know, a highly Western inspired uh, series. And I think, and, and you can see that a lot. And like what I what I really love about this first episode was just how diverse and you know everything was with all the different alien creatures. You know, you had everything you know from people you know dressed up as aliens, to, like little puppets and, mm-hmm. and everything. Um, and then you have. Uh, you know, the introduction of the Mandalorian of this you know, mysterious character, you know, like I, I'm sure I'm not the only one, you know, being a big uh, Boba Fett fan from uh, the original trilogy and, uh, you know, love that armor, love that look. And, you know, Bounty Hunters too can't go wrong with that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're so used to seeing, you know, Bounty Hunters kind of like on, on the bad side of things going after the heroes that, I thought it was kind of nice, you know, first of all, just getting kind of in there and seeing like the bounty hunter type world. You know, we, we got a taste of it in the original trilogy with, you know, Boba Fett and uh, Darth Vader's interactions. But with this, you know, being able to see it from the bounty hunter's point of view and, and that whole world, like, I, I really appreciated that and, and got into it. And, 
I think the Mandalorian himself is, uh, you know, kind of mysterious and everything, but he, there's elements of, you know, he was serious, but uh, at moments, like, his, like, his interactions with, with the IG-88 kind of droid, like, I, I, I thought that was really well done, as, as well as um, the other alien character on the on the planet that they were on uh, at the end uh, that was teaching him like how to ride the, mm-hmm. the, the those mounts and everything. Yeah, um, I I enjoyed that, and it just it felt a, a, a lot of it. It hit the things that kind of got me into. You know Star Wars, the you know the unusual things like the, like at the beginning the the one creature guy that uh, you know that had the flute to bring in the different rides that they had, uh, first the droid and then the other guy, mm-hmm. um, and every and just all the culture stuff like, uh, I dug it a lot, and of course you know the Mandalorian, um, you know base and everything, thought that was interesting, and. Uh, yeah, like I just overall, uh, I I really dig the I dug the episode a lot. Yeah, me too. As a fan of westerns, I mean, uh, if you didn't know, I'll, I'll, it should show up in, on camera here. John Wayne, right there. Mm-hmm. Big fan of John Wayne. Big fan of his westerns. Clint Eastwood. I love spaghetti westerns. So when you combined. Star Wars with the spaghetti western feel that was just perfect for me. Plus, you had all the callbacks that you you could find, eh, all kinds of callbacks to the original trilogy. Uh, they were in a cantina. Um, you could see different character puppets uh, around. You know, character like you said, the aliens. They were all there from the a lot of them were there from the the trilogies. Um, the one that really I thought was funny. I don't remember the name uh, the name of the the character. I, I know he has a name, but you 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 know uh, the you know, the little alien thing that's sitting in Jabba's palace. It's Jabba's pet there, the one that has the high pitched maniacal laugh. Mm-hmm. Um, seeing those creatures roasted on a spit <laughs> that was just kind of funny. <laughs> oh, some people use them for food. Um, the stormtroopers. In classic stormtrooper gear after the fall, like being used as bodyguards, basically. All, yeah, no, I, all good stuff. And that's I, like I love the fact that they were being used as just like bodyguards, and uh, you know that this was a post Empire world. You know, I I really feel like you know I haven't watched the the sequels, but uh, you know I felt like they. I know enough of them to know that they really clung on a little too much to stuff from the past, from the original trilogy. And I like the fact that it was a progression. Mm -hmm. And that uh, this was, you know, like a post empire world where, uh, you know, the empire wasn't in power. Yeah. And just wanted to, you know, and just to see the dynamics of that. I, to me, that's interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I mean, politics aren't always fun, but they have just the right uh, right amount of the politics throughout the show. Just like the original trilogy, politics were involved. I mean, for crying out loud, Princess Leia was a senator when it started. So, politics has always been part of uh, the Star Wars story and uh, they had just the right amount well, the, yeah. for a TV show yeah. like okay it wasn't yeah. you know it wasn't shoved down your throat it was more based on like seeing just where where everyone was at mhm and the classic boba fett look to uh, the mandalorian's helmet and uh the uh, mishmash to his armor, giving you an, uh, an idea about what's going on in the Mandalorian culture, which you will learn a lot about the Mandalorian culture throughout this this series. Which I'm looking forward to. Mm-hmm. 
yeah no it's uh yeah no it it really kept my interest a lot um you know it's uh it was a nice slow build you know through the progression you know getting the that first bounty mm-hmm. um you know the alien you know i know some people kind of complained that he was a little too kind of like they felt like he was more in place of like a marvel film and i can kind of see that you know a little too kind of like jokey like it it felt more marvel than star wars and i could maybe see that a little bit um with that first bounty that uh, the Mandalorian got, um, but uh, I, I didn't. I didn't think it was too bad. You know, it was just enough where, like, I, you know, I, I could give it a pass and not really be bothered by it. Um, and then to uh, the different, you know, to, to the new mission that the the Mandalorian went on and everything. And the process of him getting that like it, it was all just very well done yep you learn quite a bit about uh about culture in the star wars area uh, i i didn't think in anything of the uh marvel connection i didn't i didn't see any myself when i watched it through now, but like in, uh, in, in terms of tone no but, it didn't strike that tone with me at all so I I know I know like you said some people said that but I'm not some people like I didn't notice right. I'm sitting down to watch Star Wars I'm not comparing it to me personally anyway I'm not comparing it to any other franchise that's out there unless it's mm-hmm. a blatantly obvious reference right for sure but uh yeah no I didn't I didn't get any any uh Marvel-esque feel from uh how jokey the character was. I mean, right. The original, the original trilogy had all kinds of bad jokes in it, all kinds. Yeah. So, well, and not that, not that there, there's always been jokes, like uh, just more of kind of like, um, I, I guess the tone of the joke, uh, the jokiness, you know, cause like, you know, with, with the original star Wars, you had, you know, a lot of humor coming from Han Solo, mm-hmm. you know, with, uh, with him being kind of like more, you know, kind of snarky, and the the interplay with him and Leia and and Luke. You know, there was natural humor that came from it. With this, it was, it just kind of, um, just from what I like, I understand it. You know, like, you know, like the kind of like the bathroom humor kind of stuff. It seemed a little out of place to some people, uh, but uh, again, you know, they it wasn't. It was only for like a short segment, and I felt like it. Uh, immediately you know snap back to everything uh to, mm-hmm. to that tone and everything and the the jokiness that was came in later between the mandalorian and the droid mm-hmm. you know that there was a lot of you know a bit of like you know han solo uh style humor very much I so saw. very much so and i and i really liked it i like the fact too that uh you know there was the, the quippiness that the the mandalorian had you know because you know, the one thing that I, I was a bit worried about was I would I was afraid that he was going to be a little just too stoic, but uh, he, and, but you know at the same time too there was a there's like a, a fairness to him too, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know something a, a you know where you're kind of used to more like kind of like the cutthroat um, bounty hunters, but with the Mandalorian you feel like he's he's tough but fair. Like when he wanted to give uh, both of the Blorgs to um, the the I think the Nick Nolte character, um, you know, between that and everything, like you can already tell that uh, there's uh, more dimensions to this guy than we're we're used to from other bounty hunters that we've seen in the Star Wars series, and I like that. I really do. Yeah, it's one of those things. You know, they're they're doing a show about a bounty hunter, so we get to have a, a character that's a little bit more rounded, a little bit more filled out. Because, like, what? We saw a bunch of bounty hunters on the Death Star just before Cloud City. And then we saw Boba Fett for, like, a few minutes in Return of the Jedi. 
before he went into the Sarlacc pit. So yeah, there's not there's not ever really been too much development in the movies. Um, there has been some of the development in the uh, various cartoon series uh, that have been put out, um, but uh, nothing nothing quite as substantial as what we what we get through uh, the Mandalorian. So this is this is a good thing for the for for the Star Wars. That's for sure. Absolutely. Okay, well, we did spend uh, a bay, uh, quite a big deal of time uh, putting everything uh, together, but uh, I, for a general for a general overview, I think uh, I think we did uh, did some justice here. Because, I mean, I don't want to get too long on the first episode, so right. Well, you know, like uh, it's it's hard to talk about this episode and not uh, talk about that final moment with the reveal of Baby Yoda, which. You know, of course, it's no surprise anymore that uh, that that was the reveal at the end. Yeah. Um, and you know, I've I've obviously known about Baby Yoda since the beginning and everything, but I thought that there was a just a nice reveal if you were to take it and not go into it without knowing any you know what was about to happen. Oh yeah, for sure. Like uh, having like watched these episodes when they were first coming out on Disney Plus, because I've had it. That was one of the first to actually uh, jump on the Disney Plus bandwagon. I've had it since day one. But I also have three boys all under the age of seven. So I, that's where all their movies were going. I needed to get it. <laughs> right. Um, but uh, yeah, like, uh, wa- watching it, I still remember, like, oh my gosh, it's a Yoda of some description. Like, I said, okay. Now I know why the uh, now I know why these guys are so interested in getting at this at this bounty so so quickly. And that was even before some of the things that were revealed later. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I was surprised, but also grateful to see it because I mean, okay, so we all know Yoda lived to be over nine hundred years old, and it makes sense that a species that's that long long lived would still be in their infancy at 50 years old. Yeah. No, absolutely. And of course, the baby Yoda is cute already. Mm -hmm. Which is not very many cute things in the Star Wars universe. No, there is not. But uh, I think everybody will will find this uh, a little amusing. Uh, As I said, uh, we're expecting a little girl. And uh, we we asked the boys that can talk because my youngest is just starting to talk at two, and is pretty pretty oblivious to what's going on. Uh, but uh, the other two, the seven seven and four year old, we uh, asked them what they would like to see as a name for their sister. And my oldest son will actually you know, had a decent name. He he wanted uh, hope to be part of the name. So we're going to use that as a middle name. But when Alex, our four-year-old, was asked what names we should call the new baby, he came up with two names. They're, they're very unusual. Um, wiggle your butt. Because that's what he does when he goes to sleep. He wiggles his butt. And uh, Baby Yoda was the uh, second one. And we're saying, well, that one's kind of taken, so we'll just hard pass on both of those. But thank you for your input. It was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that was a, a wise choice, uh, saying no, no to that one. Yeah. But anyway, I think uh, I think we'll cut it here, and uh, it's a good forty-five minutes. It's a good episode length, I think. Yeah, so, a good way to kick things off. Yeah. So, if you want to follow us throughout the week, you can always find me at dr allen two hundred one pretty much anywhere Twitter, Instagram, all the all the social medias. I use the same handle everywhere. So if you see dr allen two hundred one, you, you're guaranteed it's me. Greg, where can the people find you? You can find me on Twitter at the underscore Badger Piper or on Instagram as the Badger Piper. And uh, yeah, you can uh, 
see me on there and kind of uh, follow follow me and my uh, pipe smoking exploits uh, or any sort of uh, random things that I decide to post on there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't have anything for the show just yet. Uh, Still in the early stages. Uh, If you do want to email us, you can. We're recycling our email address. So for those of you who haven't listened before, it is reverseflashtime at gmail.com. And for those who have been listening to us, I hope you came back when you started seeing episodes pop again. You already know it because you've been listening through the flash. And, uh, and we do, yeah, and we do plan on uh, when the flash comes back, kind of uh, doing some general kind of like updates and uh, mm-hmm. you know our thoughts on the season, and everything. Maybe not as detailed as we had been doing before, but I th- feel that uh, you know. For as much as we've uh, stuck around for, with the show so far, mm-hmm. uh, we don't want to just simply abandon it. So. No, no, not at all. We just uh, decided that we wanted to cover other things, and this is the best way we can think of going about going about doing it. Yeah. So you know, we'll be doing the Mandalorian. We'll be, uh, you know, looking at uh, possibly Avatar uh, mm-hmm. and other sorts of uh, other sorts of shows too. Anything for, that's anything that's kind of geeky or nerdy will probably give it a look at least yeah very likely so if you have suggestions that you'd like to uh, like to see tweet at me tweet at Greg email us give us some give us some thoughts anyway that being said thanks for watching everybody and listening and good smokes and good TV viewing Mm -hmm.